Naik, you, uh, Mr. Nath, you are from uh, Kotak. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, born in Kotak. Born Correct. in Kotak. But you have done your um, graduation from Bits Pilari. Yes, sir. Now, you have done your schooling from Bhubaneswar. Okay. So, I mean, you have been a little out, of course, but I, since you are from Odisha, we will ask you about what. I mean, suppose you are uh, made the, uh, the tourism in charge of Odisha state. You get into IAS and you become the Secretary of Tourism. What are the main, uh, how will you make uh, Odisha as a, uh, you know, as a very, very interesting uh, tourism destination like Incredible India and uh, even better than Madhya Pradesh, they always get the first prize. So, uh, Odisha has a lot of potential, but still uh, don't hear anybody going to Odisha except visiting Puri Temple. So, what are the things you will do to make it more attractive? Some of you say, no, no, it's very attractive. You say, how do you make it more attractive? What are the main steps you will take? Uh, so, as we know, Odisha is India's best kept secret. So, mm -hmm. my first attempt would be to unveil that secret and uh, make a better marketing and uh, proper infrastructure development of the place. Like? Uh, for example, sir, we can have proper amount of hotels, proper amount of roadways, airports, uh, bus stations, among others. Additionally, it would also involve training the locals of that area so that people are able to experience the local uh, heritage, arts and craft among others. And my second step would be to conduct uh, proper <coughs> safety, sa safety procedures for the Odisha and to develop the untapped regions of Odisha. For example, particular districts like Koraput, uh, districts like uh, Nayagad have not been particularly explored what by the What are the things to be seen in, they are known as KBK region water starved and all that, but is there any tourism potential there? Yes sir, there is a good amount of ecotourism potential there uh, with respect to the heavy forests we have there. We also have a good amount of natural beauty in the name of, uh, in, uh, in the form of Deomali, which is a place where the clouds meet with the hills. Uh, 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 taking a little further now, uh, recently the Chief Minister Odisha has declared that he will make Puri uh, temple as a parikrama, new parikrama pathway and the entire development of that Puri uh, Jagannath temple will be starting very soon and he is a photographs also. But do you think Mr. Dyke that uh, this is a healthy trend in the sense that of course Ayutthaya has happened, we know. Uh, that uh, our, uh, that, uh, this, uh, the other also, the Mathura also, sorry, the Kashi Vishnath uh, parikrama etc. has happened. Now, do you think this is the administration getting to involved in the places of religious importance uh, uh, to develop their government money? Uh, of course, Ajitha was not a government money, but it was privately uh, this thing. But here, the Prime Minister says, Chief Minister said it will be a government project. So, do you think that there will be a little uh, different image of India is being projected outside or people who are not from the the same religion, the same caste and all that. Do you think it was it was just justified? Sir, so with the recent uh, uh, Jagannath Parikrama project, we see that there, ha there are two dimensions to it. One is the cultural dimension, uh, which uh, results into making the temple better for the deployment of tourism and for developing the place. And second would be the economic sphere. We see that temple towns in India have been the backbone of the economy since uh, since thousands of years and any investment into that uh, is uh, leading to a good return on investment. So that is a very good okay, thing. Okay, so from them. economic point of view, he, the very government wants to spend on that. Uh, then the question may arise that why not there be certainly places of interest for the uh, for other religions like uh, Christianity, Muslims, in Odisha also must have been. So why not take up those uh, temple towns also? Uh, sir, with respect to other uh, religion uh, development, we see that Dhauli has been particularly developed in the field of Buddhism. We also see that a couple of mosques, especially the Katak's Jama Masjid has also been particularly developed, so that people have a more easier experience of uh, devotion as well as of prayer. And with the respect of, with respect of uh, Christianity, we also see that the church of Epiphany in Katak has also been uh, sufficiently developed. So, our society is in the form of Sarva Dharma Sambhav. 
and uh, a good deployment and a good economic development around these areas would not only facilitate the tourist and make their lives easier but also ensure that the state is able to gain from it uh, in the form of tourism uh, my last question is you know this uh, the odisha is i suppose the state where the, uh, the present administrative dispensation is for the last 20 years or so no change in that do you think it's a very healthy trade of the uh, same administrative structure you know, which means the chief minister and the entire uh, group of ministers and they are the place for 20 years plus almost the longest so i mean they have come through a democratic process but this is good for the society so with respect to the present dispensation in odisha there are a couple of factors with respect to it uh, first would be that uh, the overall development trajectory within the present dispensation has been has been good and we have seen that uh, states had, the state has increased its GDP by around 7.62% almost, uh, almost in a decadal sphere. We also see that uh, Odisha has also developed in the social manner. We used to see that earlier Odisha uh, had the bane of suffering from droughts and starvation but uh, that is not the case and the areas which were earlier uh, the, in the clutches of hunger have been liberated and have been made the food bowls of Odisha. And uh, with respect to the uh, ongoing uh, dispensation, we feel that the choice of people is paramount here and whoever they choose is there to stay. And uh, additionally, there is also a healthy opposition in Odisha in the form of national parties and in the form of some regional parties who are also making foray into the state. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> uh, Amitan, so your, uh, your subject is political science. Yes. Sir. Uh, can you tell me, you have read Machiavelli? Uh, yes sir, I have read Machiavelli. Okay. Machiavelli says that the end justifies the means. And Mahatma Gandhi says that end is equally important, means are equally important as the end. So what will be your stand? So my stand would be to judge the situation on a case by case basis. For example, with respect to Machiavelli, he says that ends justify the means in the form of national interest. So when national interest is uh, needed, so all kinds of means could be adopted. But when you are dealing with the internal administration of the state, you also need to ensure that the means are also right. So that uh, the processes we follow are in the form of the rightful law of the land. And uh, in this, the means will take uh, precedence over the ends. Okay. You spoke of development happening in the state of Odisha, but what about the human development index? Is it improving? Sir, uh, Not infant mortality, maternal mortality. Sir, with respect to the human developmental index of Odisha, we see that there are certain sections where the human developmental index has improved in the form of education of people, in the form of nutrition and in the yeah. sphere of health and education. But there are additionally there are certain places like the IMR and the MMR rates uh, where Odisha is above the national average but uh, steps are being taken to improve that uh, in the coming years. Okay. And have you travelled from Puri to Konarak on that beach road? Yes, sir. Either I have way, traveled. yes, sir. You I have travelled. Yes, sir. You found anything wrong? Uh, so there are, uh, in particular, I did not find anything of uh, glaring wrongness in that. But uh, there are some issues there. With the, for example, in late night, we see that a lot of car racing happens there. Illegal car racing happens in that area. So that is one thing which could be controlled. Okay. To my mind, there is a big opportunity lost. What they did, they built a, constructed a beautiful road from Puri to Konarak. But did the plantations on the beach side? So you can hardly see the sea while you are traveling, which is the hallmark of a beach road. Anywhere you go, the beach road is open towards the beach. But here all casuarina, jam, all sorts of plantations are on the beach side. So you are travelling like in any other road. Hardly you feel that it is a beach road. And it runs all along the beach. 
very funny. Sir. Okay. Okay, sir. You want to respond? Uh, sir, I wanted to bring out a few points here. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> first would be that uh, there are some patches of the area where the sea is uh, very much visible and people are uh, uh, regularly conducting sightseeing there. Even the Kodak Sand Art Festival is conducted along those lines as well, where, the, where these trees are not obstructing your view. And additionally, I believe that some of these trees have been uh, planted there so as to reduce the impact of the cyclones, which are also a feature of Odisha. Okay. All right. You are fond of chess. Yes, sir. Can you tell me how many grandmasters we have so far? Uh, sir, if I am not wrong, I think we have around 84 grandmasters at present. And who was the uh, chess player who got Arjuna Award recently? Sir, uh, Pragnananda from Tamil Nadu got the Arjuna Award. Pragnananda or his sister? Uh, his sister, sir. Vaishali. Oh, okay. Uh, Navin Babu has done lots for the hockey. He has popularized the hockey and brought Odisha into the map of hockey in a big way. So, what is the biggest stadium of hockey? Sir, the biggest stadium of hockey is in Raul Kela, that is the Birsamunda Stadium, which was constructed uh, in last year to facilitate the World Hockey Championships, which are being conducted in the state. Okay, my last question. Uh, have you heard of Quad? Yes, sir, I have heard of Quad. What is, is Quad? Sir, Quad is a grouping of democracies within, within the Indo-Pacific uh, area. It composes of the country of uh, countries of India, USA, uh, Australia, and Japan. Okay, what is, what's the objective? So the main objective of the Quad is to ensure the uh, ensure the security of the Indo-Pacific region and to cooperate on various other issues like climate change, technology adoption, telecom, vaccines, among others. It sounds so good, but why China says that it is Indo-Pacific NATO? So there are a few insecurities of China, if you could say that, uh, in the form of Quad, because uh, first of all, China feels that uh, the coalition of democratic countries is a form of uh, and of uh, anti-China grouping uh, against its authoritarian structures, which uh, authoritarian form of government. Additionally, it also feels that South China Sea is its own backyard, and having other powers in there will uh, adversely affect its interests. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you have done your B from BIT Pilani, BITS Pilani, Hyderabad yes. campus. Yes. How many Billa Institute of Technology mm -hmm. are there in the country? Sir, within the country, there are three Billa Institute of Technology Where and Sciences. They? Where are they? So, one is at Pilani, second mm -hmm. is at Goa, and third is at Hyderabad. What about Ranchi? Uh, Ranchi, it is BIT, sir, which mm -hmm. is a different uh, institution from the BITS. But it is also known as Billa Institute of Technology? Billa Institute of Technology, sir. Uh, yes. Any other Billa Institute of Technology by the name of Billa? Um, I don't have okay. any facts. Now, so it has a different status before the, the merging into the government. Uh, college is still uh, private uh, held or uh, in the government stream? Sir, there were two proposals to mm -hmm. merge it with the formal IIT structure of government. Mm -hmm. One was in the 1960s and one was in the 2000s, but mm -hmm. both were refused by the government. But both were refused, refused by, by the. So trust. still, BIT is under the management and control of. Uh, yes. Sir. Uh, hmm. sir, it is under the control of the Billa Trust. Okay. So the management is under Billa Trust. Yes. Sir. Okay. I believe there is one in Dubai also. Yes, sir, one is in Dubai. That is, he made it clear that mm -hmm. he is talking about the, not the uh, abroad ones. Okay. Now, you see, uh, we have a system of e-governance also in certain sectors. So, how do you think that the e-governance has impacted the public behavior so far as compliance is concerned? E-governance has compacted the public behavior so far as compliance is concerned. Sir, I believe that e-governance has a very positive effect on the compliance here. For example, uh, in the banking industry in particular, we see that uh, <coughs> earlier bank accounts uh, were used to be opened in a very haphazard manner. That is facilitation. Okay, sir. I am talking about compliance. Uh, so, with respect to compliance, we see that uh, people now are now giving out their Aadhaar and the PAN card details mm -hmm. for every scheme which they are mm -hmm. uh, using. Mm -hmm. So, I believe that e-governance has a very positive Mm -hmm. uh, impact on mm -hmm. compliance mm -hmm. in the country. Okay. What do you find the difference between Kotalia, the other 
अर्थशास्त्र एंड प्लेटोज रिपब्लिक सर कौतलिया अर्थशास्त्र एंड प्लेटोज रिपब्लिक आर टू डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ गवर्नेंस स्ट्रक्चर्स विच आर बीइंग प्रपोज वाइल प्लेटोज रिपब्लिक मोस्टली डील्स विथ हाउ द रूलर शुड बी इलेक्टेड हाउ द एजुकेशन सिस्टम भी देर बट कौतलिया अर्थशास्त्र इज मेनली फोकस्ड ऑन द रियल पॉलिटिक एंड हाउ द एक्चुअल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इज कंस्ट्रक्टेड प्लेटोज रिपब्लिक इज अ फॉर्म प्लेटोज रिपब्लिक इज अ सिग्नेचर ऑफ आइडियलिज्म इन पॉलिटिकल थॉट वाइल कौतलिया अर्थशास्त्र इज अ रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ द रियलिज्म इन पॉलिटिकल थाट okay you see we in the past we had uh, some scams great scam in the financial sectors uh thereafter there have been too many efforts on the part of the government uh, and the regulatory bodies to make it perfect okay. do you think that uh, the the development over the last two decades indicate that we are scam proof so first of all i would like to point out that uh, no system is uh, scam proof uh, with the upcoming scams we have to improve our regulatory structures in the past we saw that uh, scams were being conducted in the financial markets the harshad mehta scam we improved the capacities of sebi hmm. uh, recently also we found out about the satyam scam we uh, developed the corporate governance structure of the country and in later years we also found out uh, with respect to the vijay malya scam or the nirav modi scam so we improved the compliance system and the loan giving system of the country so slowly and slowly we are trying to plug in the loopholes and i believe that we would be able to navigate through the challenges of the modern financial times okay last question how do you think that uh, how much do you think that the balance of power is still relevant in the international sphere so the balance By of some examples yes so the balance of power will be uh, is uh, known as the common sense of international relations mm. and uh, we see that uh, countries are still following that old procedure of balance of powers of aligning with countries of uh, offshoring their capacities among others but we also see that there is, has been a new form of uh, interconnectivity within the countries <coughs> so we see a form of complex dependence interdependence among the countries so today balance of power exists between the complex interdependence of the countries and the prime example is india china while we are uh, uh, competing in a number of levels we are also cooperating in a number of levels and we are also trying to bring in external uh, factors into it okay thank you yes uh i've been hearing you you have a very high academic scores in your school 10 and 12 10 out of 10 in class 10 very fantastic results you have come and uh, i see that you have chosen ifs as number 2 uh, ahead of police service it is against the trend could you give me some reason why you are not going with the trend trend is is ips so uh, i would like to first of all i would <laughs> like to point out that uh, initially i did not have much idea about the indian foreign service okay but uh, when i was preparing my political science and international relations yeah. i got to know about the service as a whole and then i saw dr jay shankar within that role and okay. performing fantastically as is the foreign minister okay. and i also read a couple of his books that is uh, why the indian way so as a result i was uh, inspired to prepare okay. to put uh, rfs into second very priority. good i'm glad uh, you found that uh, useful whatever books you read uh, is your father in a uh, indian railway account service or is or where is he sir he is in indian railway account service okay okay uh, at present he has been transferred as the joint secretary and financial advisor to the ministry of home affairs in the nat grade department in what department in the nat grade nat grade nat grade yeah. okay okay uh, that's good so uh, tell me you were talking about china uh, and uh, quad also was discussed what do you think of sark has it died because of india's non cooperation or is it still flourishing so with respect to sark i think the foreign minister of india made a very good statement with respect to it it, it said that pakistan is the camel which slows the trail of sark so i believe that uh, the competition between india and pakistan and the unilateral supporting of terrorism by pakistan is the main reason that quad is not able to fructify in the manner in which it quad was envisaged. or sark oh, sorry sark yeah, was yeah. envisaged in that manner right and uh, what do you think is uh, happening to nam of which india was so called a founder non aligned movement we are still going with it 
but uh, are we in a similar situation as before or things have changed? So, with respect to uh, non, the non-alignment movement, we see that there has been a continuity as well as a change with respect to India's stand. Earlier India used to be on the margins of international diplomacy and politics, but today we believe in strategic autonomy and multi-alignment. But uh, and uh, we are now following the non-alignment through multi-alignment that we are associating with uh, most of the countries and we are following most of the diplomatic uh, summits and we are participating wholeheartedly in that. Earlier in which uh, we do not used to participate in a, in a wholesome fashion, we are now participating in the international community in a wholesome fashion and as well as hedging our bets against any of uh, India's uh, problems. Yeah, like you mentioned strategic autonomy, uh, that two words explains most of it. Yes. Yeah, very well done. I just, uh, I will uh, ask you, you worked in Gurgaon in JZS Associates, what is that? So, ZS Associates is a management consulting and a technology company which uh, mainly does consulting work for pharmaceutical sector. Okay. Is it an Indian origin uh, company or come from Europe or? So, it is a US based company but one of the founders Prabhakant Sinha is an Indian. Okay. Okay. And just closing, uh, could you uh, tell us a uh, little bit about, you said uh, non performing assets of the public sector banks. Uh, is there an effective way in which we can plug it once for all? You know, uh, finance minister has been mentioning uh, waving off a 10 lakh crore in December and that was third or fourth or fifth statement. So much money is going down the drain. Taxpayers hard earned money which can be used somewhere else. Uh, do you have something in mind since you have a good entrepreneurship uh, experience and some advice by which infrastructure loans or public sector loans do not go waste? Sir, so, there are a few ways in which we can tackle the NPA problems. The government has taken, government has undertaken a good amount of steps and we have brought down the amount of NPAs in the economy by a very healthy percent. In the no, but that is because you are removing all the bad loans into a bad bank and then the banks are happy having a nice statement, you know, balance sheet. Uh -huh. But if they are there, they are not, money is not going to be recovered. So I am asking effective way to ensure it doesn't happen and if it happens, the recovery should happen. So first of all, uh, in this regard, we need to ensure that the loans which we are giving is done by a proper KYC network. Do, due diligence you mean? Due diligence. Okay. Yes, sir. And no evergreening of loans and all. Uh, sir, evergreening of loans could be done if only there is a financial gain which could be made out of it. If there is a proper return on investment or there are some other uh, sectors, for example, in technology or in the semiconductor sector where there are long gestation periods. So I believe that some amount of evergreening could be done in that. But if uh, evergreening is done to overcome financial indiscipline within the companies, that should not be allowed. Okay, good. Well done. Thank you. Hello, I'm fine, sir. Abhitanshu, I can see that uh, you're an electrical engineering graduate from BITS. Yes, sir. Still remember something or all washed off? Sir, I don't have uh, that much re recalling of the facts of the thing, but I... Okay, let's talk, let's, let's talk a few general recreational electrical engineering. Uh, uh, if you <laughs> look at uh, the transmission and distribution, you must have observed that it is always in the multiples of 11. You have 220, you have 110, you have 11 kV, 33 kV, 220 kV. Why multiples of 11? So I am not able to recall the facts at present with respect to why it is such. Okay. So um, the specifics can be discussed or you have, you just have prepared only the electrical vehicle thing and you want to discuss only that? Uh, specifics, uh, if possible, sir, could you ask me a question? <laughs> Your father um, is a railway officer, you're an electrical engineer. Why uh, do we, uh, we have been prefer preferring DC traction over AC traction? What are engineering aspects? Why railways usually prefer DC traction, used to pre prefer uh, DC traction over AC traction? So when initially the power uh, transmission lines were established, uh, DC line was the first discovered current uh, which was uh, proposed by the, by the scientists. But later on we found out uh, that the power losses which are occurring in, uh, in the DC transmission line are very high. For example, powers for formula in DC lines would be I square R, which is I, uh, that is current square into resistance. So the power losses are becoming very high. So instead we started to opt for a AC transmission line and later on we were able to employ a rectifier to use it in the houses for direct current supply. 
Another question related is that uh, whenever they be ha having this AC transmission, we can always have step down transformers to reduce it or step up for the transmission. What are the methods to do it uh, in a DC trans transmission? Got my question. You cannot employ transformers yes, because transformers uh, are AC machines. Yes. Sir. So what do we do if we have to transmit DC? Step up, step down. So I believe that we can employ the use There's of no resistors. How can you believe about it? Yes. Engineer, you just <laughs> let me know. So I think that we can use uh, use resistors in that, so that uh, the trans uh, a small amount of resistance to increase the voltage and a large amount of uh, resistance to decrease the current, and uh, we can. Will resistance cost in losses? I'm sure. Uh, yes, sir. I believe that they would be costing so us. Obviously, it cannot be employed on, uh, say, HVDCs. Can be? No. Yes, sir. What will we do then? Sir. We are not really very happy discussing. Uh, let, let's discuss PSIR, which is your adopted uh, uh, love, right? Okay. Sir. Okay. Um, just unravel this uh, Navin Patnaik mystery for us. I mean, either something is really wrong with the people of Odisha, they are electing, re-electing, and re-electing. Or something is very right with Mr. Naveen Patnaik, or is it a combination of both? So Why uh, he get uh, is get getting re-elected after re-election after re-election? So there are a few factors which are working in the honourable CM's uh, favour. First is his uh, lineage from the great Piju Patnaik, who was the stalwart of Indian independence movement <coughs> as well as of the state of Odisha. And second would be the social developmental schemes which are launched by the C CM when, uh, since he came to power in the form of Kalia for the landless labourers, Amlan to reduce anemia in Odisha. And uh, additionally, we also see that Odisha has been a low, li low crime level of uh, low crime levels. So it's all uh, positive about Mr. Davin Patnaik. That's uh, that's the reason. Or there is because in any democracy, you understand, you're a you're a student of PSIR. Any democracy failing to change the government is basically a redundant democracy. Sir, if the people choose to elect their leaders in a particular fashion, I'm, I'm, sir, I'm not saying there is anything wrong constitutionally here. Yes, but as a political thinker, you can understand it. Yes, sir. So far, sir, we have seen a good performance track of the government, and I believe that that is the reason, uh, reason that they are getting. Okay, elected. let me ask it differently. How Mr. Patnaik and BJD is able to stop BJP, which otherwise nationwide is doing differently? So there are a local, there are a couple of local factors which are working in their favor. First would be the social developmental schemes, which are. Uh, which are upcoming in Odisha, which is a counter to the BJP model of social developmental schemes. And additionally, I believe that Naveen Patnaik uh, is a very charismatic leader. Uh, so it's a charisma versus charisma. Uh, charisma versus charisma, there is also the role of regional. Okay, last uh, section from me. Uh, you, you, you mentioned about uh, uh, chess. Yes. What exactly is the difference between, uh, in terms of time thing, uh, the rapid, the regular rapid and blitz? And do you believe that the blitz is killing the regular chess? So there are. So first of all, if I would like to come to the timing sector, we see that uh, classical games are usually conducted in 90 minutes plus 30 seconds. Rapid is usually 15 minutes plus 30 seconds. While blitz is usually at 5 minutes zero increment or 5 minutes three second increments. With respect to blitz uh, as a competition to the classical chess, we see that uh, the players who are good in blitz have to be by default good in classical chess. If they are able to recognize the patterns in the longer format of the game, they will be able to do that with sufficient practice in the blitz game. So I believe that the competition between blitz and uh, classical is not a real issue so far. Okay, uh, we were discussing about the grandmaster. What is the difference between a WGM and a GM who is W? I mean, the women grandmasters and grandmaster who are women. Sir, uh, to become a grandmaster, you have to have a minimum rating of 2500 and you have to gain three grandmaster norms. For uh, women grandmaster, it is uh, the strength of the player is between an IM of the regular IM uh, international master category and a FIDE master. So, that uh, there is that. Okay, last one. Give me any player who is still opening with the uh, uh, C or uh, C, say the C file, I mean C5, C6. So I believe there are two openings. Uh, one is with the white, that is the English opening C4, and you have the Karokan defense in the form of C6 and the Sicilian C5 in response to E4. 
Okay, thank you. So thank you. Abhita, so please wait outside and call you back for quick time. Okay, sir. Thanks. Take your seat, please. Achha, uh, Abhita, so formal part is over. Just relax. Yes. Uh, it, uh, feedback only. Now, you have you got your interview date? Uh, so far, I haven't got my so date. At least a month, maybe uh, three weeks to a month, perhaps. Yes, sir. Uh, now, um, you uh, see, we are all almost you did a total unanimous that you are done very well. Thank you, done sir. very well. Uh, <coughs> you are doing full time this or you are doing something else and this also? Uh, sir, I am full time into civil service. Full time into this. Okay. Now, uh, uh, what you uh, can do or should do is uh, this is your own subject, electrical engineering. <coughs> Uh, perhaps you can brush it up a little bit, right from the uh, your textbooks and the recent advances, applications. Yes. Electrical uh, engineering, there are a lot of applications now, right from the oil and gas sector, oil prospecting to anything you think of uh, electrical engineering, will be there in, in, in electrical or civil will be necessary. So, they can ask about any, any industry and recent advances in uh, artificial intelligence or things like that. Yes. The recent cutting edge uh, advances. Plus uh, the main, uh, the grid functions, the hydroelectric power, grid functions don't match, lot of problem about uh, the renewables, they are not matching the grid frequency, lot of problem in putting the uh, main national grid. So these are losses, transmission losses, the recent advances, I think recent some, uh, this thing has come. Uh, some uh, adv uh, technological uh, solutions, electrical vehicles naturally, the lithium ion batteries, new I think some of them are thinking of some, instead of lithium they are thinking of something else I suppose some. So uh, all sodium that, batteries. Sodium and different. all that. Yeah. So all that is a part of the will be uh, equal experience. So uh, that of course what second of course about Odisha. Odisha of course will be there. Now that question is why the 20 years of this thing, it is a controversial thing. Yes, sir. I mean, you can't simply throw away Mr. Chief Minister when he is getting public uh, this thing. But whether the question purport is not whether why he is coming again and again. Purport is by being here, by being, he being there, is it really benefiting or there could be a, could have been a little better. So, he said ki, uh, he is benefiting, he comes from a good background or something. Good background is not the case. I mean, he may be his father, Biju Pantak may be great, but point is what he is delivering. Because they may say he is not also keeping good health or something, he is too old or yes, sir. maybe he should leave away for a younger uh, something. Those are things make one way. So, a little bit you think again. Okay, sir. Whether it is a boon or bed for Odisha, 20 years plus. Uh, I mean, I do not want to be uh, told to influence anything. Just a, and uh, thirdly, I can say that you still have not uh, come to the service. You are still an independent young boy. Yes. So that are very young, 24, not even 24. Yes. Uh, two months short. So you have to just keep a, you know, when you go there before the actual interview, you have to have a little body language which will be a little more humble. Okay, sir. Because sometimes. Uh, you are uh, getting into a, because you know they are subject wise is very good and clarity is there. So, sometimes you are forgetting it is a job interview after all, at the end of the day it is a job interview. So, you will have to impress those fellows. So, there you have to be uh, even uh, submission also, sorry sir, like, uh, and if you have not ready with the answer, some guess, sir, can I, uh, can I make a guess sir, they allow <coughs> like that. Means, for example, the the chess, it is your hobby. You said ki chess is that boy, actually yes. the Arjuna out of the girl. Yes, sir. So, yes, if sir. you have some uh, doubt, you should say, can I guess, sir? Okay. Then suppose they say, okay, eh, yeah. So, normally they say yes. Then you can make a mistake, they won't mind. But suppose you make a, I mean, you already knew almost a little, the same yes, family. Yes, sir. So, there are any doubt, you ask for permission. Yes, sir. So, you, without permission, you are not 100 percent sure. Then you don't, uh, they will say, oh, sorry sir, but you can make a guess. Yes sir. Okay, so dress etc. Dress you can, uh, that day, can avoid wearing the, this, uh, the short sleeve sweater. Uh, yes sir, it is too cold, that is why. It is too cold, it is too cold. That day, in February, in February yes, it would be quite uh, nice. Yes sir. 
<coughs> sorry. <coughs> and the perhaps that uh, necktie could be a little single color or something. Okay, single color. Single okay, got color. it, sir. Uh, and uh, and they, you are know, sitting a little two legs a little apart. Dot okay. out that okay. time. Okay. A little. So okay. uh, when you see it uh, properly, middle of the seat. You put your uh, back on the lower portion of the back of the yes, side, sir. side yes, uh, backrest, and maybe the leg, but don't make it art look artificial. Uh -huh. Artificial, nice, and put it there, and you're making little head gesture, okay. But uh, legs too much apart, yes, uh, looks uh, a little the same. Subject wise, you're solid, very nice, we're all unanimous, even you should crack it. There is no reason why you should not crack it and crack it at the highest level. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Hansu, about Tavin Patnayak, you know, see, uh, he has turned BJD into a cadre based party, right up to the booth level, the thing which BJP does. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, that is one of his, uh, one of the reasons for his longevity. Of course, uh, development is there. Without yes, performing, sir. these days you won't get votes. Yes, sir. But this is also an important point. Yes, Cadre-based party right up to the booth level. Yes, sir. And a strong OBC backing. Okay, sir. That whether you can say it in the interview, you can, of course, because you are not yet a bureaucrat. So strong OBC backing. So these two reasons are Okay, quite important. Many things you could not ask, like many things you are, uh, apart from Odisha, we did not ask for general economy yes, and sir. your uh, this thing, the uh, PSI we did a bit asking, but many things were not really, not possible to ask. Yes, sir. So, uh, then you uh, covered a slowly, slowly, quite enough time and uh, you have no problem with delivery, so you just want to cover, but don't put pressure on you. Hmm. Don't put additional pressure, at normal pressure, uh, you are giving an interview, internal pressure. Additional pressure, if you may make it, a, you mess it up and all that. Yes. Just do normal, whatever you are doing, your exercise, your morning walk, or whatever, X, Y, Z. Normal food, normal thing, be comfortable. Yes, and do a little, 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 but think. More than things you think about, the opinion based question will require a lot of thinking. Yes. And you have to give a point twice. You have to always give a point, even opinion based. Okay. Sir, first I want to say, secondly, thirdly, fourthly, stop. Want to stop also is important. Okay, sir. Don't, uh, because they will, if you want to ask anything, initially you ask you. Okay. Uh, so that's why. Uh, and uh, if maybe you have enough time, you can, even a few, two, three weeks or something, you can come. Come back to anywhere, any of the institutions, see how much improve. You have improved. I mean, you should get it the highest echelon, not the lowest. The, the least you should be there at the up. But you can maximize that again. Yes. M more, more, the excellence has no cap. Okay, excellence. yes, sir. So, yeah, right. that, uh, so thank you very much. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.